Now we are interested in the small signal model for the NMOS and the PMOS transistors. And these small signal models, or what we call equivalent circuits, are the same for the NMOS and the PMOS transistors. The first one is in the triad region. Remember that what we said in early electronic courses is that if the transistor is on using DC voltages and there is a small signal superimposed on that DC signal, then we can separate the DC signal from the AC signal and then the transistor will have an, an equivalent circuit for the DC signal. And this equivalent circuit is basically an approximation. It is an approximation, and to get an accurate model, you have to rely on computer simulation. By any means, this equivalent circuit will have two regions. The first region is the triad region. If the transistor is on and it is in the triad region, and you have a small signal existing in the circuit, then this transistor will be replaced by the variable resistance R on. So as you see in the diagram here, the transistor is replaced by that variable resistance R on, where we say that R on is equal to 1 over mu n COX W over L times the absolute value of VGS minus the threshold voltage. The second region is the saturation region. So in the saturation region, the transistor is more interesting. Keep in mind that when we design amplifiers, we make sure the transistor is operating in the saturation region. So the small signal model in the saturation region is very important. So remember that the transistor is a four terminal device. So when we do the small signal equivalent circuit, what we will have, we will start with the gate. So here is the gate. And from the gate to the source, we will have an open circuit because the gate is insulated from the source and we are interested in the small signal VGS. We are interested in the small signal voltage VGS which is the voltage from the gate to the source. Then here is the drain and from the drain to the source there will be a dependent current source. This dependent current source will equal to GM times VGS. So this current source depends on some parameter called GM. GM is the transconductance of the transistor times VGS, which is the voltage from the gate to the source. Then there is a resistor, we're going to call it RO. This resistor is from the drain to the source, and this resistor relates to the channel modulation effect. We will explore it shortly. And finally, there is one more dependent current source. This dependent current source, which is the transconductance caused by the body source effect, and that is a function of VPS, which is the voltage from the body to the source. And finally, here is the body, and we are interested in the voltage from the body to the source, VBS. This model is very important, and you must memorize it as well. And this is the same model that is used for the NMOS and the PMOS transistors. They are valid for both. Now the question is, what are these parameters and how did we evaluate these parameters? So let's look at the first parameter, which is the drain source transconductance, that is GM. So GM is the drain source transconductance. Basically, the way we define the transconductance, we say that GM will equal to alpha ID over alpha VGS. So how much the current change by changing VGS? If we keep VDS constant, so at a particular VDS, by changing VGS, the current ID will change. So GM tells you how much the current changed over how much the voltage changed. So it is the transconductance, the change of the current over the change of the voltage is conductance and because we do want the alpha that means the change of the change of the current over the change of the voltage it becomes a transconductance and by ignoring lambda when you go through the math of defining the derivation if we ignore lambda then we have three equations of gm gm will equal to mu n 
times COX W over L times VGS minus the threshold voltage or GM will equal to the square root of 2 times mu N COX W over L times ID or it will equal to 2 times ID over VGS minus the threshold voltage. Basically, when you take the derivative of GM with respect to VGS, you end up with the first equation, that is obvious, and then if you play with the current voltage relationship to do the substitution, you end up with the other two equations as well. Now this is very interesting. GM is proportional to the square root of the current. So if you increase the current by a factor of 4, the GM increases by a factor of 2. That is very interesting property that we will look into it later on. right? And GM linearly increases with VGS. Right? By increasing VGS, you linearly increase GM. So these are important parameters that uh, we're going to explore or look into later on. Now, if we include the channel modulation effect lambda, because lambda affects the voltage current relationship, you end up with more accurate GM. So GM becomes mu n COX W over L times VGS minus the threshold voltage times 1 plus lambda times VDS. Or we can also express it as the square root of 2 mu n COX W over L times ID over 1 plus lambda times VDS. When you use the BMOS transistor, make sure you use the absolute values because GM got to be positive and so forth. So that's how we calculated the transconductance from the drain to the source, which is GM.